This is the secret to how to induce labor at home fast, or at least how I did it naturally at home. There are three big things that I focused on when I was going past my due date, but I really felt like I enhanced the moment and sped it up really quickly. I had my daughter that night and she was in my arms within three hours of my first contraction. So I think that's pretty amazing. So I focused on the mood, my mood. I focused on any negative emotions that would hinder labor from happening and I just got rid of them. I really focused on love and peace and comfort and making sure I was surrounded by those things. You know, keeping positive, making sure everyone around me was being positive. I wasn't watching things that were negative. No, like, scary negative movies that would, um, you know, get my heart rate up or stress me out. Um, just really relaxing, um, fun things were happening in the Pinkston home. And I really made sure that I was comfortable and that my home and my mind were prepared. Technically where the nesting comes from, you want to feel prepared and ready so that we can uplift those birthing hormones. Okay, the next thing I really focused on was my environment, the setting. The day I went into labor, I made sure I was, it was dark and quiet. This was more at night. During the day, we had our normal peaceful day. But at night, I really started to dim the lights and make sure I was being quiet and it was dark. Like it made a spa-like environment would be a good idea. Um, I shut the doors so that you can't hear any loud sounds or, you know, cars driving or your husband watching football on the TV, which literally was happening. I shut the door, went into my room, and made sure it was quiet. It would be a good idea to not look at your screen or phones and just let that moonlight come in. Or you could have on your blue blocker or blue light blocker glasses, whatever they're called, and that should really help. So you want to really focus on keeping warm, making sure you're not cold. You could crank up the heat or bundle up in a lot of blankets like I did. You know, get on your warm socks, your warm clothes. You could even get a hot blanket fresh out of the dryer. Another major thing that I really did with the setting is I made sure I was being relaxed and having relaxed, slow, a diaphragmatic breathing. It opens the pelvic floor actually and lowers the fight or flight stress response. So it helps just really relax the body. And also it increases the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your restful, calming body system that we need to promote that oxytocin. I learned how to do diaphragmatic breathing from Olivia. Her name is Olivia Cagle. She has a Fit Pregnancy Boot Camp and also a free master class, which I will link down in the description box below. It is super, super helpful and she teaches a lot in that free master course. So I highly recommend going and checking that out on how to breathe through your ribs and not your chest and not your stomach. So the third thing and I wouldn't say the most important, but because it all goes hand in hand and it all is a snowball effect, but this is really what I think just tipped the iceberg that, that day. So baby head engagement. That's so important. I could tell Landry was not engaged at all by the number of times she was flipping around, turning around in my stomach, and I really, really just felt like she has to get engaged for this to keep going. So I had my family pray that day and we, I was doing specific techniques and exercises and really made sure that last three weeks of pregnancy that I was keeping my posture, making sure I was balanced and in a core alignment. So those are two things that you need to know when you think of baby head engagement or getting the baby engaged um, is keeping core alignment, making sure your hips are not tucked and you're, you're just in core alignment. You know, no crossing legs, no slouching, no twisting, no none of that weird stuff <laughs> that we so do here in America. 
um, just with how much we sit. You know, we're not in that Eastern squat, um, you know, working on something in a squatting position. We are mainly like standing up on our feet, probably in a poor posture, core alignment, or slouching on our couch or sitting in the chairs wrong. Okay, so one thing that you really want to do when you think about getting your baby's head engaged is if your baby is in the correct birthing position, you really want to focus on gravity. You want to work with gravity. So if you're really trying to induce labor this day at home, I would really, really suggest standing upright for most of the day. Stay upright as much as possible, but you really want to make sure that you are in the proper core alignment. And Olivia goes over that a lot in her Fit Pregnancy Boot Camp and she may go over it in her master class, but I'm not sure. So the best way that I remembered how to do this was to stand and pretend like my hips were a bucket. And you want to make sure your bucket is just a little bit tilted forward. Um, you don't wanna be where your butt is tucked backwards or um, your butt tucking, and you don't want to be, you know, hanging over too much, but you want to make a pretty good sling for your baby and your the baby's back. Um, you want to make a little sling for your baby's back to lay in your belly. That helps a lot with getting your baby in the correct birthing position and really prevents your baby getting stuck on your pelvic bone um, where it can just like, you know, not get into the birth canal, but really kind of its head be overlapping your your pelvic bone and not slip into the birth canal. So if you have to sit down, I suggest sitting correctly on an exercise ball. One note that I really learned from spinningbabies.com was to make sure your hips are always higher than your knees. Your knees need to be lower than your hips and that just again helps make sure your body's in the correct alignment. Let me know if you're learning from this because this was just all so mind-blowing for me so in the comments below let me know if you are learning from this and what your favorite tip was. Another thing that I learned from spinning babies was to sit on a pillow to help tilt those hips a little forward and to Pretending like your hips are a bucket helps, you know, tilt them a little forward. You don't want to be butt tucking is what Olivia calls it all the time. Another tip for you is that you could sit in the chairs backwards, like with your arms on the back of the chair, with your legs kind of straddling it. You kind of want to, at the end of your pregnancy at least, take on kind of man posture, manly posture, and forget about crossing your legs or, you know, things like that. So you want to kind of be leaning forward, sitting on your sits bones, and not chillaxing like this with your belly up because that, you know, goes against gravity. The last thing I did, which was what I did the day I went into labor, are these spinning babies stretches and techniques. They focus on flipping your baby into the correct position, whether they are breech, transverse, sunny side up like Landry was, or just however they are they have loads of information on how to go into labor naturally by getting your baby's head engaged and getting your baby in the correct birthing position. Anyways, I did what's called the Fantastic Four techniques at the time is what they really focused on calling it. So I learned all of that after watching the Spinning Babies parent class. It was so helpful and I'm so glad I purchased that. The techniques can be a little awkward and ex especially if you're not used to, you know, getting in those types of positions, you could feel a bit awkward, but I was comfortable with it because I had been working out with Olivia's Fit Pregnancy Boot Camp. My whole pregnancy, I was doing other exercises as well that I don't recommend, but I do recommend the safe diastasis safe workouts pregnancy safe workouts from Olivia. 
They're awesome. She films them in her kitchen and she's just so raw and real and you'll love her. Anyway, so you do need a help of a partner or somebody can, who can help you do side lying release. Um, that one needs, you need someone's help, like especially on that one. Yeah, so that day I did a set in the morning, a set at lunchtime and a set at night. And I'm not kidding you. I got into bed, I had my essential oils going in the diffuser, and I know that really, really helps with emotions and targeting, emotion, releasing emotions and all that good stuff. So it just, you know, set the setting, I guess I would say, to just that spa-like environment. And I actually, I actually felt her spin in my stomach get in the correct position I texted my family who had been praying that she flipped and I'm gonna have her in the morning and I got in bed said a little prayer did my devotion I said that I'm ready you know getting my mind prepared getting mentally prepared and my water broke and it was the craziest thing like as I was saying amen my water broke and I was just laying in bed and it was crazy. I had my daughter in three hours in my arms. So the last thing I suggest doing is doing the exercise ball correctly, especially if your baby's not in the correct position. I highly re recommend asking your OB or midwife um, if you think they're in the correct position. Normally you can feel their little hands to help you know where they are in the body. I can definitely tell Landry was where Landry was because of how much she kicked. But if she is, if she were in the correct position, I would be doing circles and um, you know, really helping her just move and loosen up my pelvis to get in that perfect birthing position and deeper engaged in the birth canal or pressing onto the cervix because you know that produces more oxytocin which does the contractions and all that good stuff. That would be super super helpful to do if your baby is head down and in the correct position. If not, just sit on the exercise ball wherever you are. I would put it at the dinner table and I would sit on it with my hips tilted forward, my knees down, and I really felt like it made a difference in promoting gravity and Landry's head being pressed on the cervix. But anyways, that's all I have for you in this video. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.